Fuck Net you. users. Fuck you. You're cool. This episode of the Talk Cast Pod Show is brought to you by Boxu. Boxu. It's like a gourmet experience from Japan every single month. Okay, that was nice and organic, like that. Yeah, like organic, that a lot. organic. Organic. So Boxes start at $24.99, but if you go to the link in the description and you enter Team Four Star 10 as the promo code at checkout, that's Team Four Star, all spelled out, and the number 10, then you can get 10% off your order. We got this box in here. Sneaks. Delicious, weeby goodness. Let's Ooh. see what we got in this boxu box. We have not opened this box literally at no, all. So, no. I have not first touched of all, it. This is the first thing. That gives us a little guide. I believe I that should be a 20 page snack guide and cultural guide. Nice little lovely card uh, from Danny Tang, the founder of boxu. Let's taberu these oishi okashi. Funwari Majin Mochi Puffs. Mm. Kinako. That oh is, my god. That's an exciting. Look you got there. Let me, let me give this a try. Dude, it's fluffy. It's a little salty. It's got some subtle flavors, but it's like it's got this overall bland sweetness that yeah. I'm kind of enjoying. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I usually like sweets from Japan because they're not too sugary. Japanese are always the best because then I don't feel it's like more over. Subtle. Yeah. Yeah, something we aren't going to be able to enjoy right here, right now, but we got some organic genmaicha tea. Ooh. Actually, cool. I'm taking. Well, feel free. Now this looks like a goddamn cookie. I'd like show it to a camera. Yeah. So it's it's really cute. Oh my god. I want to try that first. Taiko Kum Kumamon design. Oh Kumamon! Bam! For the glory of Satan! This seems. Mm. There we go. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like sesame. Mm -hmm. Time for mm -hmm. sesame. Potato crisps. Little little. Basically, French fries as crackers or chips. Which, funny enough, they're called chips in England. Which makes more sense, because they're chips of potato. In where? In England? 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 England. England. It's leg day in England. Uh, Gude Tama Golden Pack Tamago Kake Gohan flavor. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> Mini mm. Shiruko Sando Red Bean Crackers. I think I'm gonna like these. Seaweed tempura! Handmade yuzu sake candy. Oh! Yeah, they, they, each of these pages have descriptors of the snacks, where they come from, uh, the idea of seasons, and for uh, first time buyers of a Baksu box, they will give you just an all around tour of Japan box, which I imagine is what this is but every single month they will switch up what snacks they have in here, so you're never going to get the same box twice. That's cool. Mm. Mochan Dango Mochi. Oh, what? Oh, look at the little guys. Dodonyaki, <gasps> which uh, look like crispy rice crackers. I thought you said tension on with it. Oh, that was a burst of flavor. Oh my God. Koi Kea Minits Stick Potato oh, yeah. Supa Mucho Plum. I'm, I, I'm stuck. I'm stuck on mucho, frankly. Mucho plum. <laughs> no, mucho yeah, plum. It, it's, it's, it's super so. mucho plum. It's got super mucho plum here. Yeah. Super mucho plum. Oh my gosh. Mucho plum. I don't hate it. Uh, they look like freeze dried strawberries. Oh, like that is, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That is pretty cool. Very. Oh my god. <gasps> That's nuts. That's really good. The last thing that I believe is a true snack. Uh -huh. Matcha chocolate stick cake. Oh, okay, no. Because it has one of my favorite fruits <gasps> mm -hmm. and one of my favorite foods in it. Mm -hmm. oh. oh my god. Oh my god. Is the Totori 20th century pear fromage biscuit. Or I, I love fresh pears. Uh, I worked on a, a pe like at a pear orchard for one summer. Really? Yeah, for only a couple only a couple of weeks, but uh, every now and again you like grab a fresh one off the tree. Oh my god. That was a strong cookie. Mm. The cheese comes through a little bit more than the pear. Or, yes, or, it, but it is there. Mm. It's 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 like a, oh, it's, it's coming like at the end. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, the pear comes in at the end. Mm. Mm. So thank you again to our sponsors at Buxu, where uh, if you go there again, link in the description. Use the promo code Team Four Star Ten. All uh, well, Team Four Star all spelled out, and the number ten at checkout. You will get ten percent off your order. And now on to the TalkCast Pod Show. Booga! Hello and welcome to the TalkCast Pod Show, the number one show on the internet and the weebiest weebdom of ever weebity. Deeba doo 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 doo. Deeba 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 doo.
Dabba die, dabba dee, dabba die. I'm joined here this week by Kaiser and Stefan because I have been re-watching through one of my favorite animes of all time, and I know you two both have takes on it. Hunter- Hideyasha. How dare you? He's talking about Hunter Xunter. Hunter 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 Xunter. Hunter Hunter Xunter. Hunter Skelter. Hunter Hunter Skunter. <laughs> Everyone's favorite show. I absolutely adore that show. I, I love Togashi in general. Like I, I don't know what it is about his style. I think it's the way he writes characters. But uh, Yu Yu Hakusho for a very, very <laughs> long time was my favorite show in anime until I saw Hunter Hunter 2011. Yeah. <laughs> and then Hunter Hunter's like, nope, I'm in on this now. It was really interesting when I was a kid, uh, my friend Yama, he pushed so hard for me to watch Hunter Hunter. And at first, I was a little hesitant because I saw, first of all, I saw the name. Second, it looked kind of, um, at the time, a lot of garbage anime was coming out. And if I had to be oh, honest yeah, with yeah. you. Oh, there, yeah, there, 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 there was a dark time. No, 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 no. This is You're back in 1999. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, no. This is back when I was a wee lad. And, you know, there was a, wee, wee, but... yeah, there was a lot of garbage coming out at the turn of the century. You have no idea unless it, you lived through it. It turns out you saying there's a lot of garbage anime coming out. Doesn't really narrow down the time frame. It doesn't. I mean, I, I could say, okay, which of these is not an actual anime? <clears throat> My best friend, Demon Lord, I will become him. Uh, God damn it. Like, I feel like every title comes to something like that these days. I, uh, I was possessed by a magical princess? Is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? That uh, one's it, real. Yeah, it is. Uh, in a, in a magical universe with my cell phone or some shit like that. Oh yeah, in another universe with in another in universe with my smartphone yeah. or something. Yeah, which apparently was garbage. I mean, like, what are like? <clears throat> I feel like they're all trying for an like. Are are these translated titles? Look, if we talk about this any longer, I'm gonna have to have you Issa kill me. So we're gonna move back to Hunter Hunter. Okay, we'll move a back to show. Hunter Hunter, the best Isekai, cause Green Island. <laughs> Actually, yes! <laughs> oh my god! Fuck! I mean, technically not an isekai, because it's in the same world. But only technically. Only technically. That's a spoiler, get... by the way. Oh, I yeah, am I going to like, go yeah. under the assumption that anybody that's joining a Hunter Hunter themed like, discussion here yeah. has, at the very least, seen the 2011 anime, which ended like five years yeah, ago. Yeah. If you watch the show, go on. Yeah, FY fucking I, yeah, we're probably going to spoil a lot of shit. If you don't so. care, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to talk too much about where they've gone in the manga since then, so if you're on the manga, then you're probably going to have a heads up on me. I know uh, some of the stuff that's happened, but I just want to talk about the show because yeah. it is fantastic. I love it. Yeah. One of my favorite anime in the past decade, still probably at least top three favorite shonen, might be still my favorite shonen. My hero's up there. You know, I just realized you brought me in to talk about Hunter Hunter. I did. And we are going to go to blows at some point and I'll save it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, Hunter Hunter is- some hot takes here? Not, it's a contra, it's a little bit of a hot take. It's a little bit of a hot take, but Hunter Hunter, yeah, is easily Togashi's best work. I, I feel like that's not really a question. I, if you love Yu Hakusho and you think that's his best, <clears throat> valid opinion. But for me, Hunter Hunter is without a doubt his most fleshed out universe with some of his best characters. Hunter Hunter is more mature stories. than Yu Yu Hakusho it, was. It, it also, I think it's safe to say it has the most interesting ideas. Yes, and he, um, and he plays with them more. If, if you want just straight up just a good shonen story that does all the stuff right, you have a show with the except from the final arc. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, mo mostly will do you proud. Yeah. Um, but uh, Hunter x Hunter is, is like just takes things in drastically weird directions, and it's great because of it. So, okay, what's <laughs> your, what do you think makes Hunter x Hunter? What is, what is the defining feature that truly makes Hunter x Hunter stand out? And not just against his own works, but others. The villains. Yes! All, good answer. All, all Very the, good fucking it, it, it's, answer. It's even hard to call them villains. I mean, trope-wise, that's what they are. Some of them are straight-up villains. Absolutely. But... but it's the fact that all of them have depth. Every single one of them, he gives a relationship to the world and a way like that... Like, they interact with other people. They, they all have personalities. They aren't just evil for evil's sake. I'd say all but one has depth. Which one? Greed Island, bomb guy. Oh, okay, yeah, no, that guy sucks. Even Genthru, he still has loyalty to his friends. He's not a bad villain, 
But I don't think he's very deep. No, uh, he is. He is not deep. He he is a train. He's a training arc I, villain. He I, is going. He is. He's literally going taking off the training wheels for the first he's time. He's pretty standard. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out there. Genthu kind of sucks. And and not not in the not in the he kills the arc for me sort of way, but in the this guy is so boring in comparison to literally every other villain. I mean, in there's a reason yes. he's not really the focus of the arc. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, that's... He, he's he's very much he's introduced <laughs> in the last third, like literally the last act of that arc is when yeah. he's introduced and yeah. onward. Gives him something to overcome and even and then, show off the train. And even then, he's not the focus because Razor was a bigger thing for them to overcome than uh, Genthru was. I, I love that the dodge, dodgeball. I love that oh, dodgeball yeah. game. Uh, that yeah. so good. No, you want to talk about, and he he wasn't a villain. He was an antagonist. No, he, he, was, and, just, he, was, a, he was an <clears throat> obstacle, but he was a much bigger threat. Yeah, and he was way cooler and way more interesting, to be completely honest. Like, But yeah, wow, we've skipped Pretty far no, ahead, but we're just I talking, mean, we're talking, talking about, about villains. villains. Yeah, we're talking about villains. Best villain in the entire series for me, obviously, has to be the king. Uh, Meruem. Yeah. Yeah. I. I that's He's, the only one where I. I. Uh, I think you guys know I'm not like I'm not a very touchy feely person. Yeah. But I've watched that art like the entire show twice. I've cried. I just, I just made it through my third throw. I've run. cried both times I got to the end of that story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I cried when I read it in the manga, and I cried when I watched it in the anime. I cried the first time I saw it, and I cried the second time I saw the end there, and this time when going through, I cried the first time Kamugi showed up, damn it. <laughs> I'm just like, God, oh, because she's so pure. Togashi is so good at writing these pure characters, these characters that are driven by one simple thing, but making them just so innocent about everything else that makes them so mm -hmm. endearing. Another moment that just makes me just cry almost uncontrollably is uh I'm tearing up a little bit talking about it like the moment where uh the 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 little girl um who's 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 the aunt the pink aunt when her oh, mom yeah, yeah, instantly yeah. recognizes her oh god that yeah. just destroys me yeah mm -hmm. um Chimera Ant Arc is so good yeah unfortunately it is bogged down it is bogged down by the worst pacing that show has <laughs> yeah. but it is just the it's one of if not the best arcs I've ever seen yeah. in all of anime it's a, it's a, it has a lot of really slow setup um and I, that, that said, I will say I love the narrator stuff. Yeah. I think the narrator is so fun. It's it's interesting because he's usually there just as like a hey, remember this last time? But well, in, I, but in the Chimera Dark, he's in there like five, six, seven times an episode. Yeah, it's ten like, minutes earlier. This was happening. Yeah, but it's, it's simultaneously badass and hilarious when he's like. It has been one minute. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what? Wait, it's been what? Holy yeah, shit! It, especially, especially when, the, uh, especially when Knuckle is in there trying to use his power to sap um, Yupi. Yeah. Just like uh, this entire exchange only took thirty seconds. <laughs> shit! <laughs> so uh, we talked about how you think the villains are the best part about Hunter x Hunter. If yes, if I had to what, choose what, a absolute number one thing, what villains. makes it, what sets it apart? Yeah. For me, um, and now I love the villains. Um, and I'm not even saying that this is the most defining thing that makes Hunter x Hunter stand out for me, but maybe one of my favorite parts about Hunter x Hunter in general is its power system. Mm. Because, Nen. yeah. Nen is one, like, okay, so basically Togashi sat down, watched, uh, well, he reread re all of Yu Hawk Show and reread all of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure up to that point and, and was broke like, it down to a science. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, okay. I want to give a, he wanted to make a fucking system out of this. He wanted to make something with rules and uh, like exploitations. Well, and it, it's smart because if you know the rules to any sort of, let's say, just say magic system. If you know the rules to a magic system, you can create stakes with them. Like storytelling wise, it gives you a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Um, and if you just have no rules... You kind of don't know what's ever possible in, at any given time, and you, it, and there's not really many stakes. If you don't know what X plus Y equals, then you don't know why it's important when X, yeah. you know, they do X plus Y. Even Dragon Ball has soft rules, right? Usually that soft rule is just, I don't have a lot of power right now. It's just like a, a, an energy drain that you can't quite see. Yeah. Um, it, it's It's... Not the most effective, but it's at least something because you have to have something to create sticks. Yes, and Naruto kind of has rules. He, he but tried. It, yeah, Kishimoto he, tried. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his his thing was more based around like uh, they they all have an elemental balance to them, so they can like Sasuke and the Uchiha are better at using fire jutsu. But with Nen, it's more based around you know, uh, are are you better at being like physically adept? <clears throat> are you good at like summoning things? Are you good at manipulating your aura to become other things? 
Uh, can you manipulate other people? Which I also want to know, just real quick, Kishimoto definitely likes Hunter Hunter quite yes. a bit. If you've ever watched the tuning exam and been like, oh, that's, that's the Hunter exam. Mm -hmm. He just took the Hunter exam and he did a good job, but you could tell he really loves Hunter Hunter. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, and I, I cannot tell you how much fun the Nen system actually gets because he sticks very close to his own rules, but finds ways you have, to, you have to sit through a lot of talking. But once you once you're there, oh yeah, no, sitting through with Wing, yeah, uh, Wing Sensei is it's a lot. It, it is a lot. But yeah. once you actually get through it, and once you know what X does and mm -hmm. why Y makes and it like, so much Oh, cooler. but they can't do that. But they're like, oh, but they, they can do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and one, one of the most abstract concepts that I mostly understand at this point, but I can understand if someone wouldn't, is that idea of making promises to yourself. Yep. In yeah. order so to setting, have Setting power. a rules and a limit. Yeah, basically like just, yeah, like setting your own like house yeah, rules for yourself. for a condition is what I believe uh, they call yeah, it. Yeah, and basically a form of equivalent exchange like, like Full Malcolm's where he's like, oh, yeah. I, I can do this, but I can't do this. Yeah, and the more strict the condition and how heavy your conviction is on it, the have. more powerful you can be Which with is it. really interesting um, and not something anyone else has really done because it is so yeah. abstract, I think. For, exa yeah, really cool. for, for example, uh, one of the uh, butlers for the Zoldic family, which I think might be one of my favorite families in all of anime. Oh, the okay. uh, the uh, Killua's assassin that family. weird, horrible, dysfunctional family. But they're, but they're all so tight-knit and they all care about each other, except for Aluk. Uh, but, uh, no, you, like, they are... Uh, they... They, 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 they all have their own objectives, but god damn it, if Killua's dad isn't as supportive as fuck. To be fair, they go out of their way to say that Killua is the special one. Yeah. They, they talk about They're how they baby him. They're specifically supportive of Killua. Yeah. yeah. The others are like, eh, yeah, you do a good job. But they, but they never just like... As they they as wouldn't abandon them, but they are mm -hmm. super abusive and bad. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, for example, one of their lead butlers, uh, Subone, I believe her name is, the granny, yeah. Uh, her nen ability is that she can turn into a vehicle. She cannot drive herself, but she can be propelled at rapid speeds by using the rider's nen. nen. So, so basically, you can you can do JoJo bullshit, but you can actually explain it better. Yeah, just just as long as it's you know, I, I so I can move at hypersonic speeds, but I can't do it alone. I, yeah. I won't lie, um, that is one of the things. Like I love JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, but it 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 is not interested in explaining. It, it stretches its rules a lot. Yeah, it, it JoJo's, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure has broken every single one of its rules. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure's one. only rule is cool for cool's sake. And that's, you know what? That's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not I'm not going to hold that against it's it. For style. But I will give Hunter Hunter and Togashi specifically the fucking like what? <laughs> for the <laughs> <audio> <laughs> rice crackers. That, that shotgun mic is picking that up like crazy. It's for the audio only people, we're eating food from a sponsor. Yep. So that you're gonna hear crunches and, and little ruffles sometimes. Yep, sorry about that. I'll try not to eat the super crunchy stuff, but this shit's good. <laughs> I do have to give it to Togashi for going the whole like the whole nine miles and really selling and, and, and utilizing the system that he created. Yeah, absolutely. Have you ever wondered what Nen type you would be? Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, all the time. I have right in front of me. Oh, fuck. Hisoka's Ara personality test. Oh, no. This is so dumb. I'm glad. It's absolutely dumb. Oh, so yeah, I, his theory about how personalities, you know. And it, and it seems to hold it, true. Yeah, it wasn't confirmed, but it was Hisoka's theory, and Hisoka, he's probably right. Yeah, Hisoka is some weird genius where he also figures out a way how to grade people on a scale of 1 to 100 as to how much of a threat they'd be, or in his terms, how much fun he'd have fighting them. Yeah, just that a super genius murder pedophile. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, uh, for myself, I'm pretty sure that I would either be a manipulator or a specialist. Probably a manipulator, since specialists are insanely rare. Manipulators are, arg argument are argumentative and logical. Uh, they advance at their own pace, tend to want to keep their families and loved ones safe. Hmm. On the other hand, when it comes to pursuing their own goals, they do not listen to what others might have to say about it. Wow. <laughs> okay. Is that would you would you concur? Uh, that's a neat list you got. That's a neat. Because uh, I think you're a conjurer. Oh, really? What's a conjurer? Typically high strung or overly serious, stoic and nervous. I, I don't know if so. It's They're right. often on guard and at, and uh, tend to be cautious. They are very observant and logical, rarely falling for traps. Huh. I don't know. I'd if say logical fall is where it falls off a bit. It might be a little. 
This but this it, boy this boy's run by emotion. It's a little bit. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> I'm like I'm like somewhere between enhancer and fucking conjure. <laughs> yeah. Most enhancers never lie. They hide nothing. Very straightforward. You know what? You might be an enhancer on that. Right? Yeah. Uh, Stephanie, you also might be an enhancer, but if you're, uh, are you, do you think, are you ever pr- No, you're you- way more of a conjurer, actually. I'd say more so. Yeah. More, more so a conjurer than Scott. Yeah. Cause I, I really like his, I really like the qualifications he has for a lot of these things. Oh yeah. Uh, specialists, for example, are independent and charismatic. They don't say anything impo- uh, important about themselves and will refrain from being, uh, being close friends. Huh. So they're they're reserved and but they're very confident about it. See, um, by the way, since we mentioned Hisoka, Hisoka is one of the best fucking like characters in anime. He's, He's he is absolutely one of, if not my favorite character in the entire show. Just his his motivations are pure, but they are bizarre. It's just he he's he's very much how we write Saiyans in DBZA where it's just I really want to fight that thing so oh, hard. Oh, he is fight he is literally hard fight the operative word. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's literally fight sexual. I mean, we when we were writing Cell, it's, it's specifically first in perfect form, we actually kind of looked we at Hisoka. We referenced Hisoka a lot. Yeah, Hisoka is a character that very much derives pleasure. Meaning. Meaning and pleasure from fighting opponents where he feels like he could lose. It's 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 that like adrenaline rush from I could die here, but oh man, if I win. And oh, even, yeah. even if he just recognizes potential, like with Golden Killua, mm-hmm. he's just like they have the potential to be stronger than me. I want to see how this plays out, and then I will. I'll, oh, I'm gonna fight so good. It's gonna he, be such a good fucking fight. He looks at them. He looks at them all the time. Like the first time he sees Gon, it's like I could kill him right now, but oh, that would be such a waste. Yeah. yeah or Savor how about it. how about in the fucking uh, in the Great Island arc mm. when he's walking behind them and he's just <laughs> looking just, down at them like, mm, yeah. <laughs> and they just both. You walk in front. Yeah. You, you get in front. You're getting so strong. <laughs> oh man. Look how yeah. strong they are. Like strapping just strong, your lads. Boy. <laughs> if it weren't for the fact that he literally says that they're unripe, I'm like, wow, yep. that's like waiting for the girl to turn 18, man. That is, oh. Yeah, I was thinking oh. of an always sunny bit he's, with Dennis. He's, where- he is very much creepy, but it's in that it's it's in that way where it's like, there's definitely a lot of sexuality to that, but you know he doesn't mean it necessarily in a sexual, sexual way, even though he's... Just, he definitely gets better. It's, it's, it's complex. He's, he says the word shooing at least shoo-ing. twice. Shooing. Yeah, it's it's complex. It's weird. It's creepy. It's amazing. But he's it's such perfect a, for what he is. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect for the character that he is. You know what? Hisoka's sexual energy reminds me of Cat's sexual energy. It makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> Hisoka, monstrously horny. <laughs> he absolutely is. By definition, if you if you if the word monstrously horny was to be printed in a dictionary. I'm pretty sure Hisoka. Hisoka would be there. Just, just get a shirt printed. I, I don't know. I don't know who's printing all of these dictionaries with pictures in them. But I need to get an Ahegao jacket, but only Hisoka faces. Only Hisoka faces. You can do that. I could do you that. You can do that. Just oh. have the words "monstrously horny" written on the back. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's uh, wearing that the Kineticon. There you go. Uh, and I guess just to just to round out everyone saying what they think sets uh, Hunter Hunter apart, for me, I think it actually is the world of Hunter Hunter, mm. because specifically because unlike most shonen stories, the world of Hunter Hunter is cruel and it doesn't give a shit about you, mm. um, and like the villains are connected to that. Um, but like it's just a very interesting scenario where most shonen anime, the world is set up for the hero to win, even though it seems like it's set against them. So many things come together to to help them win, and in Hunter Hunter, you never feel that way. You feel like, no, if they, if anyone makes a wrong move, they will die. I I'm going to say this: it starts off like a traditional shonen. Yeah, show. it seems like it, it absolutely does. Like you go through the traditional arc of a uh, boy goes on adventure, he meets a couple of friends, they start going on their journey. It's not until it's like the first three uh, episodes of Madoka Magica. Pretty much, the the first time you feel like something's really wrong here. Uh, there, there are a couple of moments it could be. It could be when Hisoka first kills that dude pretending to be a uh, mm-hmm. proctor. But you were like, ah, they're a villain. Yeah, it's like, oh, he's a bad guy and he's going to kill that no-name. Yeah. But when Killua just nonchalantly walks up to this murderer and rips out his goddamn heart, 
and hands it to him. That's the moment where you're like, okay. I'd say even before that. Okay, well, what's the part where you think really starts to separate? There's a moment that's always stood out to me in the first arc of Hunter x Hunter where uh, everyone's doing the spider test um, where they're getting the spider eggs. Yeah, the... Right, and, yeah. and Gon's just standing there watching people die just like, eh. Yeah. And that's that's, that's a moment that stands out to me as like, what the fuck is up with this kid? Yeah, and you know, oh, yeah. Like, I, I never, that never registered with me. I was like, oh, those are like, because he's like, as, as, an, as, as an audience member, you're sitting there from Gon's perspective. It's like, Gon knows how to survive and stuff like that. And oh, look at that idiot. He just fell. I never thought of it from the angle of, wow, Gon's just watching these people die and not I'm reacting. Feeling nothing. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I have to agree with you. That was something that set me on edge at first, even though I didn't really notice that. Like, I didn't consciously notice the fact that Gon's watching these people die and he doesn't have an emotional response. And same thing with the heart thing. He doesn't really care. Yeah, he's he's just like, oh, Killer just murdered that guy. Gon's Good work, we made it. Gon's meanwhile, kind of a weirdo. He like, absolutely is. He, is. he is a dangerous... I would not trust da- that kid. He is a dangerous, dangerous character. Yeah, yeah he's, he, like, he's, he, a, he's a good son. He has a very pure heart, but he has... Uh, like, he seems to have empathy. But, he, but only for the people he cares yeah, about. Only for the people that pass his moral test. He, yeah. Basically, what he accepts is these people came here uh, knowing the knowing what could happen to them. He's, so, yeah, so, so, so he's, he's a Darwinist. Kind of, but he doesn't like innocent people dying. That pisses him off. So yeah. So if, people who get themselves into a situation and die, I guess he doesn't care. So I, he's like I, a weird I, I, pragmatist. I think, I think that's the, yeah, pragmatism is probably the better word But it's still it. a weird ideology to have for a child. Yeah, oh, yeah. And But that's that's sort of the interesting thing is that you see him very early on. He's lived a life of uh, continuous, not, not, and not the traditional type of hardship that we know. He's just put himself in situation after situation that's caused him to grow and mature. He, he but, lives. He lives next to a forest with things called fox bears. Yeah. yeah. I, I like. I, I made a video on Hunter Hunter, a uh, fourteen four star, a couple years ago. Yeah. At this point, and I, I, I floated the idea that that Gon might have borderline personality disorder. I think I was off about that. Yeah, borderline. Uh, I probably. think that I think that ignores uh, some things about his character. But um, he has a code of ethics that he that he appreciates. And, like he, yeah. he has that code of honor. Yeah. But he also, if something's in his way, he will get it out of his way. He, he, the first time he kills someone, he doesn't care that he did it. And it's it's during the Chimera Antarch. The first time he kills someone is when he kill, kills the turtle guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. And he. Just keeps smiling. He doesn't consider. He doesn't consider the idea that he killed a living being with, that was sentient, and that's the first time he's ever killed. Is, you know what? I and need that a, we know of. Yeah, I need to double check that that's the first time he's actually. I'm ever. fairly certain it is because I, I took very like I took note of that my, on my second watch. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. That's fair. You, that, you, that you, is you're the, probably right. To be fair, Kite at that point had built into his head these things are monsters and they are going to kill things like it, it, true but he doesn't seem to internalize that much like he's he seems to treat them like inter- people i think all he the time. internalized it immediately it's just like okay that's the I, line they these things are here to kill these things are monsters i am here to stop them. i think he internalizes that they're his enemy yeah and he will he doesn't have a problem killing his enemies however when he meets other ants later on that are sentient and straight up talk to him he's willing to he'll talk converse. to them, yeah. Yeah, so I think, as, as long but he'll as, also yeah. kill them I it, think, it, I yeah, think. he he mentions that to. Sorry, uh, he says that specifically to. Oh God, I can't remember his name. The the uh, chameleon ant. Mm. Oh yeah. When he's like, uh, no, I believe you. What? You're just gonna believe me like that? Yeah. Besides, if you lie, I'll kill you. Good point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like it's very yeah. black and white. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think I think because at that point he'd already realized that. Again, it's like what I said before. When Go knows what the rules are, when he knows what the stakes are. When he knows it's do or die in this situation, it's do for him every time, mm-hmm. uh, and he doesn't really concern himself concern himself with the higher thinking of that. Mm-hmm. He's already he's already established like this is not the wrong thing to do, so I'm going to do it. And wrapping it around to my point, I think the reason Gon's like that is a it's almost a sort of critique of a shonen protagonist mm-hmm. a little bit. You could see it that way. I don't know if he intends it that way, but it's a logical extreme yes of that of that attitude and also i think he's just informed by that the cruel world they live in yeah and i think that's what makes Killua such an amazing foil and companion to gone uh, gone uh it's it's the fact that their arcs almost kind of like mirror each other's mm-hmm. in a certain way where Killua came from this world of darkness gone came from this world of nothing but happy, love happy, and happiness yeah, wind waker island and yeah. uh yeah absolutely 
and uh, when they meet, Killua looks at Gon like he is the sun. He is he is the bringer of light. But through their time together, and as Gon starts facing more and more of the harsh realities that Killua's already had to deal with in life, mm -hmm. all of a sudden Killua is the one who's trying to carry Gon's torch and keep that light alive in him. Mm -hmm. Because as the sun goes down, the moon reflects the light. Okay, we can go poetry about it. I like it. Th <laughs> though I would argue that Killua actually, even by the end of, the of his place in the story that we know of so far, because in the manga he just sort of leaves. Um, <laughs> and uh, But actually faces less than Gon consistently. He's he's faced abusive parents, but like in terms of like but he's still been in, in the lap of luxury his entire life. Even going out and doing stuff while he's, he's in life and death but situations. He's, but, he's been, but he's been tortured his entire life. That's true. In the, like on that yeah. hell mountain he was his father but, left him at a arena and told him, "Hey, make it up to the make it up to the two hundredth floor, or else you can't come back." Yeah, <laughs> you know, like it, yeah, it like, literally you know, he a definitely where you could die. He definitely struggled, but in other senses, Gon has struggled more and does struggle more throughout the series. Oh, yeah, yeah. well, yeah. Through, throughout the narrative arc of the series, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But that's throughout because Killua arc. went through all the hell before yeah. we meet him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of easy to forget that sometimes. The actually, like where Kilo comes from, mostly just because of how he carries himself. Mm -hmm. you don't, he's you don't he's see, so calm about it, because this is his normal. Yeah. yeah, you don't see a lot of the trauma there. And, you know, Togashi didn't need to write that part of that character. That's not what he wanted to focus on with Kilo. It's not entirely realistic, but then again, this is Hunter Hunter. Could, and every, could, and, and every time, uh, especially after they're introduced to Nen and Kilo starts using his ability to figure out, oh, I know how to be, like, I know how to turn it into electricity. Everybody who sees him able to do that is like, that is so sad that you can do that. Yeah. Because, oh, yeah. <laughs> because he was electrocuted so much that he knows how to use electricity. He knows exactly what electricity feels like. I forgot about that. Yeah, some people are like, why do you, oh, how man, can you do what that? happened? Literally, Kid. everybody that sees him do that is like, that is tragic. Yeah. Uh, um. Well, and I also think it's interesting about the show that, well, A, I just wanted to note that I don't think Gilo could have ever become friends with anyone but Gon because Gon is so fucking weird um, <laughs> and, and brutal in his own way. Oh, well, uh, he could, he maybe could not have until he became friends with Gon. Yeah, now once, he could. Yeah, because his initial friendship. He makes a lot of friends afterwards. Yeah, but only with the, with the gateway of weird-ass uh, strong kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he would have never. He would have never hung out with Leodio. Probably would have. Wouldn't have even had more he, than two Krop words. He and Kurapka would have killed each other. Probably. I was about to say would not have sh shared more than two words with Kurapika if they didn't come to blows. Yeah, um, but also I think it's interesting how this is a show where um, you know most shonen stories, hero excels like they struggle, but they're usually the best around. That's never true with Gon. No. Killua was consistently better than him. Yes. Yes. K Killua, he's never not. <laughs> it's, it's very much uh, along the Yu Yu Hakusho lines where he, a, by definition, is the strongest character on yeah. that team. Uh, he's, but because he's recovering from surgery, he is uh, something, something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Yusuke is the protagonist, so he has to power scale quicker. My Jigan, I. Yeah. Oh, uh, but with Killua, yes, he has way more skill than Gon. He has way more practice in combat. He's able to master abilities quicker. He kind of slums it with Gon. <laughs> yes. Gon, however, is that uh, he has... That limitless potential, mm -hmm. I think, is what everybody sees in Gon. It's like, he's got that pure heart, and by God, once he learns how to channel everything, he is going to be so fucking strong. And That's when he decides like when he decides to uh, tap into that potential, mm -hmm. uh, you're like, oh, this child is frightening. Which, yeah. which lends to uh, the fact that Gon is just so pure in his convictions that he does, like, once something happens that he believes, this is the only way forward, that is the only way forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say also. I think Gon's like unlimited potential form. What do people call that? Oh, actually, I actually have no I, idea. I think you just call it like unleashed Gon. Yeah, uh, but super, like super Gon rage. Well, at, at this point, Gon. at this yeah. point, the long, Mystic Gon. Mystic Gon. At this point, the insanely long hair is like iconic to that. Is that just a joke? Oh, is it, that a joke about Super Saiyans? I mean, I don't know if it's a joke about Super Saiyans or if it's just the fact that, okay, we're going to have to age him 20 years in a second here, so this is all the hair that he got. Yeah, it's just the fact that standing up is like, that seems like a Super Saiyan joke, like Maybe. amidst your dramatic moment. But here's the thing. The visual cue and initially is a little silly, but it's also kind of terrifying because he looks like the, he looks like a vengeful spirit. It almost makes him look like yeah. an elder god. Just He looks yeah. like an oni. Like yeah. I, I, that, that is the first time in the show where like I'm watching it the first time through, not knowing what's coming, and it's like, 
how's he gonna get out of this? Because there is no way he's like when when he's there with Pito and he learns that like she's not going to be able to bring Kite his mentor and friend and like this the, he, the entire he does, purpose he does that of internal his promise back, thing. He's just like okay. Okay. And I don't like, care what happens to me. Just give me all yeah, the power. I don't I care what happens. Basically, now. no. It's not even okay. It's a no. That I. It's <laughs> it's, it's just I, no. Literally, his phrase is, "I don't care if this is it." And I, I think part of it is that that was his connection to his dad. Part of it is that I think he feels guilty. Yeah, he, it's absolutely his internal guilt that he was never able to process. And, that entire arc yeah. is about him trying to process guilt. And it might be the first time guilt. he's ever really felt guilty about anything. So, and I think that comes that actually plays largely into the black and white nature of his sense of morality. Mm -hmm. um, he knew what his his job was. He knew what his responsibility was. He failed. Everything and leading. Because, oh, oh, sorry. And because of that, one of the only people. From his childhood that he knew that helped him grow somebody he was responsible for for protecting died yeah because of him and uh, everything leading up to that point uh because it, at this point in the chimera arc when he's about to run off with pito pito is healing kamugi who had been killed in like the siege attack oh yeah and he doesn't or, give a shit yeah i mean he doesn't care about kamugi he all he sees is his enemy and somebody his enemy is helping which it, makes yeah. them his enemy yeah and like he decides to listen to reason but he's like yeah he I'm listens to reason nice and and, and he and only he, because and he's observant as hell but everybody that comes into that situation doesn't want to give him an ounce more information because they know that might taint the darkness that's brewing in him and therefore make him weaker in the fight to come. And I should point out the only reason that he listens to reason at all is because of Kiloa. Mm -hmm. If Kiloa hadn't been there, that fight would have gone very differently and Gon could have died. Yeah. Um, but it it is such an amazing scene to watch Gon sit down and basically say you have, you, you, you have an hour. It's like you have an hour and if you don't, if you try anything I'll kill her. Yeah. The girl on the floor. The completely innocent the helpless girl. little girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's like, I will, obviously, that's more important than your life to you. I will kill her. Yeah. And that's. Like, as long as you do what I say, fine. I'll, I'll wait. Yeah. And, and he sits we, He sits there just patiently, dark, like dark, no light in his eyes yeah, that, whatsoever. That, that, that shot of him just. Yeah. Just, yeah. With Consistent. His with his Batman cowl. Look. And as soon as, uh, uh. Oh god, a poof shows up. He's like, you don't fucking move. You stand right there. He's controlling that entire room. Yeah. It's, Even it's, though they probably could kill him. They, but, but poof, poof absolutely could have. But Poof notices something. He's like, wait a second. Pito's doing what he says. Mm -hmm. I sh I don't why? know what's happening here, what but the I'll just fuck? Take I should step have, back. I should observe. And he, like he controls that entire room, and as soon as Poof betrays that. He doesn't immediately get up and kill. Peter's like, please, don't do it. He's he, Gon just sits there and says, you have 10 fewer minutes. Yeah. Just calm, straight face, and that scares the fuck out of her. Yeah. Yeah. As and it should. Because not only is he so angry, that that intensely angry, but he's also in control. <laughs> yeah, it's that it's that writhing, seething fury. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's scary shit. And it's coming from a character that up until that point did not, like, show the capacity for you know violence and for anger and, and and you know and at least on that level yeah but never this sort of like vengeance that vitriol yeah. for another and it's interesting how uh j like just talking about uh fucking cat what's her name again P uh pito yeah pito yeah uh Nefarepto, yeah mm -hmm. uh but uh, her, her character, like, she's set up as, like, a horrible, horrifying monster. Oh, yeah. And by that point, you kind of like her. <laughs> so, yeah. So I mean, you're, 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 like... Because she, you she has having... this, like, this fun trait to, like, yeah. Yeah, well, she didn't... And, and you start to understand, like, she literally had no idea what she was doing. Mm -hmm. And only she now does she actually understand the consequences of killing people. I don't think she... I don't... She certainly doesn't regret what she did. Yeah, but, but, she, but she, like... She's only just now realizing, like, eh, I didn't need to do that, and I'm. she might not have done it at, at her current state. Maybe. Yeah. And, like, you start to like her, you start to see that, like, she could learn, and then that's when Gon gets there. Especially, especially as the art goes on and uh, Yuppie begins to form this sense of honor, and the king throughout this entire point has been becoming the best damn anime villain of all time, if he's even considered a villain at this point. Yeah. Because like, he's, 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 you call him a villain, I don't think he's a well, villain. He starts off 100% oh, yeah. a he villain. He starts off as a potential villain, but as I, he's, I, he's I, what he is, is he is actually kind of a reflection of what I think the, like, uh, what you would call a god, basically. He is, oh, yeah. He is, 
uh, a very simple-minded creature with one thought that starts to expand and learn as he goes, and he reaches this level of divinity. Uh, it, it is very much... Uh... Togashi channeled a lot of Buddhist philosophy mm -hmm. and a lot of classic Chinese and Japanese folktales when he made Meduem. Um, he channeled a lot of the idea of we what is it like to grow from a normal person, from a child to a god, and what are the steps, what do you go through in, you know, in that process? Though, though gain, interestingly, his, his, his story is like an inverse of a Buddha, mm -hmm. in, yeah. that, in that he, he becomes more worldly, and that makes him better. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and that's... that's he's, he's a dark Buddha. Yeah. Like, he's... Dark like, Buddha. He's the dark reflection of a Buddha. Uh, yeah. But, but yeah, like, and it's... Uh, yeah, I mean, he even has the ears, like... Mm -hmm. But uh, it's also interesting how in that arc... Um, man, what's, what's his name? The, the leader of the hunter organization? Netero. Oh, Netero. Yeah, Netero. Uh, when he realizes that, that uh, Amedoem is learning and becoming better, a better person, basically, like more human, mm -hmm. that's when he's like, I have to kill this dude. Yeah, th this makes Which him more so dangerous. so interesting. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> he's, he's looking at him like, this guy is so powerful. And there's a reason, I believe, in some of the... Uh, the Supplementary books. Meruem is the only one ever listed to have like it, when they show their little nen, nen chart. Uh -oh. His is the only one that's entirely blacked out with question marks all over it, because <laughs> and his his abilities and skill are off the charts. He is by far the most powerful character we have seen. And he has to, and he still has to resort to an atomic bomb inside mm -hmm. his ship. Oh, Netero does, yeah. <laughs> Netero, Netero has to fucking blow himself up with a chemical weapon to take out a nuclear weapon yeah just yeah. and it still doesn't work it did <laughs> well, I it mean, absolutely did I mean, it, 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 well actually yeah. no it absolutely did i guess yeah it technically worked but then it technically didn't because his, his people well, were there it, no it I did mean, work then it technically didn't then it technically did it yeah, absolutely in the end, it, it absolutely did, the fucking did its job. job yeah that's true it did that, its job that's true um and, but yeah and i, I also want to like just Put, going way away from the Chimera and arc, no everyone talks about that. I love, I love the um, York New City arc. A yes, lot. York I, New City is my second, maybe my first actual favorite. It's really great, and I love that Gon just stops being the main character. Yep, he's he's a side character of that arc. It's, it's really nice that uh, that that's one thing that really separated Hunter Hunter for me is that they're willing to pass the uh, pass the main character ship off to another character. Yeah, for characters him. will just leave the story and then come Ki back later. Kilua becomes the main character of an arc. For the, uh, and he stopped the main being even a side character for a bit. Yeah. And fucking Leorio. Characters will just come and go, and <laughs> yeah. it, it'll just be like, it'll just be a road a revolving door of who who's important right now. But it, but it makes it extra special where where like Leorio comes back later. Yeah. And it's like, oh, Leorio's back, and he has Nen powers. Oh, I miss that guy. Especially I, the way he awakens it. I fucking yeah. I, the, the way, I just way, watched that episode this morning. The way he shows he shows it shows it off the first time, just punching Jing in the face. I, I love Leorio, and yeah, the fact that he's never the main character kind of works for him. He's not the guy who needs to be the main dude. He's just the supporting guy. When who, Whenever he's there, he always adds something to the scene. And he's, the, he's the Bernie Sanders of the organization. <laughs> <laughs> Even when he... Oh, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm mad. I need to do things. I am so upset that all of the Nen are going to the top 1% of Fuck Nen you. users. Fuck you. You're cool. I, I'm gonna punch you in the face. <laughs> Go see your son. <laughs> Leorio is an amazing side character. Hell, I think uh, York New City gets that much better when he shows up because, yeah. like, he just adds that little extra bit of tactics to everything that's going on in that spider arc. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you brought up York New because we've been talking about Gon, we've been talking about Kiloa, and now we've talked even about as much as you really have to about Leorio. I can go Kur on about Leorio. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kurapika is one of my favorite protagonists in almost any anime. Like, any anime. He's really cool. Like, like when he first shows up, you're like, oh. That's that's where Kishima got Sasuke. Okay, and then and then, and then you're like, oh no, he's way better than Sasuke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the interesting thing about him as a character is that he's he starts off as kind of oh yeah right, like you're gonna be able to do anything, you're gonna go try to avenge your stupid pretty, pretty boy, yeah whatever, and then he very quickly what the moment mostly he, succeeds. Yeah, when he realizes how Nen works, he 
fast tracks to becoming one of the coolest motherfuckers the, the most in all powerful, anime. Like, like when he has a goal. Yeah, because he's like he has that goal, and he is like. There, there is no fail state for him. It's like it's either I do this or I have failed my entire clan. Yeah, and his a part of it is due to the fact that he is willing to sacrifice whatever he has to to get to his goal, and he's he's trying to plan out every step of the way. But even if by the time he's done with all of this. He's dead as long as he did everything he, yeah. he set out Which to do. Which is a little short-sighted if he wants to keep his clan alive at all, but... Well, no, fucking a bitch is actually on the uh, roadmap, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, uh, uh, it, but it's amazing. As uh, as a... Uh, as in opposition of Gone, who just does not really learn much aside from, like, go for your goals and anything that gets in your way, get the fuck out of your way. If and his goal with, is just meet daddy. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you're with me, you're with me. If you're against me, you're against me. I'm sorry, I just heard meet daddy. Meet daddy. <laughs> well, but, his goal is Kar just, where's dad? Yeah, uh, Karapika, <laughs> on the other hand, is uh, on the side of... When Karapika starts meeting more of the spiders and, you know, asking them to do shit like... Why are you doing this? He starts to realize that they are people, well, and that and they like, have. They don't even like hate him. They don't. They they didn't have any old. They were just kind of doing their job. Yeah, when, when he's manipulating the woman, uh, I can't remember her name for the life of me. The one with the memory. Oh abilities. yeah, I I feel really bad. I can't remember her name either, though. It was it's a really weird name. Too. I mean, a lot of the names. She are, died for their sins. She yeah. did. She absolutely did. And uh, as he's like trying to manipulate, he's like, "Why are you doing this? Why 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 do you believe me? Why do you trust me? Because you wouldn't ask me that if." You were lying. Anyway, I'm gonna go do that now. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, and and the spiders are also a really interesting case of like absolutely villains. They're bad people. They're oh yeah. Really bad people. Yeah. yeah. But they're but a you family. You kind of like that's the thing. You, it's all about family. Yeah, yeah. They're the Fast and Furious crew. It's all about family. And Kotohoshi, uh, Kohei Hodokoshi. <laughs> I put it all together in a portmanteau. Uh, Kohei Hodokoshi absolutely learned from that yeah. because the spiders. Are the are are the roadmap for the League of Villains? It feels that way. They're sh shitty people, but they're friends and they like each other. And they appealing. care about each other, and that makes them instantly appealing. Like when you when you see Uvogin tearing apart, and I think what helps it the most is that they're also fighting bad people when you meet them. Yeah. So when you see Uvogin basically tearing apart the shadows in that first fight, you're like, oh, this guy's so cool. And, and also he's... also recently with the League of Villains in the in the anime, you see. You start being on their side mm -hmm. when they have to fight other villains. Yup, exactly. <laughs> it's a trick that works. Uh, so when when you see him tearing apart the shadows, and then all of a sudden, Karapika is now up against this big badass that now has to play jobber for the who's, entire who's visual. Spiders. Sorry, sorry. No, it's fine. Yeah, whose visual uh, cue is taken directly from Dragon Ball? Yeah, no, he, he is Nappa. Yeah, Uvogin is Broly. Well, yeah, he's he's yeah. built like Broly, but he is the Nappa. Yeah, he is. So Uvogin immediately, the moment that I saw him start his fight against Kurapika, I was like, okay, yeah, this is a Dragon Ball character. He wanted to. Ha he he made an enhancer. He even has Big Bang Impact. That's yeah. one of his moves. Yeah, and, and then you see like after when kill, when Kurapika kills him, you're like, fuck yeah. Oh, and yeah. The, he and brought then, a shovel to that fight because he yeah. knew what was gonna happen. Yeah, he knew he was gonna bury him. And, <laughs> That's so cold. That's so cold. <laughs> yeah, and and um, and, and yeah, but then you see how it affects how it legitimately makes them very very sad. Yeah, they're like, oh born. wow. And like, I'm not sad it happened still, but I understand why they're sad. When, when you see uh, Kurolo, like, just cry when he reads the poem that mm -hmm. Neon gives him, it's just like, oh man. And especially with the aftermath that comes of it, like, yeah. once, the, once everything starts hitting that fever pitch. But before that, what endears you to uh, Uvolgin is when he's captured, he's just like, he wakes up. Because he's 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 been poisoned. He's got leech babies in his yeah. bladder, and, he's and he needs out. to get rid of them, or he'll die of pain. How much time have I been asleep? Where am I? Or, yeah, he doesn't care about where he is. It's like how long have I been out? And then he figures that out by addressing his own body. He's just completely calm the entire time as he's about to, you know, be tortured. Yeah. And he's just like, whatever, I'll get out of here. And when they show up to save him, he just looks over the side uh, at. Oh god, which which is the snake guy? Uh, Whomever. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm trying to remember. That's some him. God, I I forget. Eh. Yeah, but yeah, yeah like the uh, he's like you them. clean up well. It's like wait, what? Just everybody in that room gets murdered. Yeah, and and 
I love the way he opens the door after that scene, too. He doesn't open it. He pushes it in the entire door frame. Boom! Yeah. And then later on, he's like, he's like kissing them, <laughs> them on the cheek and shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, like as a weird thank you. You brought me beer to kill the leeches. <laughs> oh, yeah. He does that to um, uh, the, the radio guy. Yeah, radio. Uh, Shogner. Shogner. Uh, Shelnark. Yeah. Shelnark. 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 Yeah. Kiss the Shelnark on the yeah, cheek. There, there are some names I which, remember. Which, by the way, I, I know I knew a guy like a Vogan. Very, very, very similar. Just the, oh, look at you. Mwah. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Yeah. Um, Stop, you'll break it! <laughs> at, 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 like, sort, sort of skipping around a bit, but I'm, I'm really surprised that uh, with the anime crew, they haven't decided to make an OVA of Kurapika's origin. Hmm. Oh, because yeah. Because the manga has explored uh, I, I that very the, thoroughly. I believe the first movie, actually. Uh, Did they? Yeah. I, I, I never watched the movies. I didn't really care. Good! They're, they're, don't! I, they're <laughs> awful! <laughs> Yeah, I, I have, how many Hunter Hunter movies have there been? Two, and they're both really bad. Which I think is telling of exactly how popular that show really was in Japan, or lack thereof. No, Hunter Hunter's in stupid, stupidly popular in Japan. Do you think we'll ever get another series? Uh, no, because uh, I hate to Maybe say this. Maybe limited series. I hate to say this. The stuff that's after the uh, Chimera Ant arc, there is a lot of good stuff. But it is not a full story worth telling. Not yet. I, I say you have, we have to see how it shakes if, out. If, and then it, it like if, if the manga gets completed, I, I hate to use the word if, but but it is an if. It is an if. Uh, if it gets completed, do you think we'd get another series to wrap it out? Yes. Yeah. Just absolutely. because. Yeah. Hunter Hunter is very popular in Japan. Its the last manga volume sold gangbusters. Mm. Yeah, it, that's the only reason they can continue the way it has been continuing with those big hiatuses is because it's just so unyieldingly popular that they can afford to do that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's like, it's like Berserk, um, which, similar to Berserk, I noted this the other day to, mm. to folks in the office, but uh, we used to have a, there used to be a thing in the Berserk uh, fandom of we'll Guts is still on the boat, yeah. and now it's everybody's on the boat. Will they ever get off the boat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're back on the boat. They've been on the boat for years. Yeah. Uh, I believe they're on, like, what, the Dark Continent arc? Yeah. Yeah, and they're, they've been on a boat to go to the Dark Continent for years, and we haven't seen Gone since then. So, I'd like to... So, we talked about... You just mentioned the anime, specifically. I'd like to talk about something... I'd like to talk about 99 versus 2011. I know you hold firm that the spider arc is significantly better in 99. I think the York New City arc in the 99 series, I think the 99 series for all, literally all of the material that the 2011 covered uh, is better, except, and I and people are gonna be like, Greed Island? No, the OVAs, except for the first OVA that came out that was finished the York New City arc, that one's good. All the garbage after, literally all like the stuff where they changed the art team and the and the color style, that's all garbage. Completely throw it out. Nobody cares. So you're not a fan of 99's Greed Island? Yeah. Oh, 99's Greed Island is the worst. It makes Greed Island a bad arc and not just a good arc. I'm actually, I, I really like the Greed Island arc, but then again, I am also, uh, I'm also a huge fan of training arcs. Well, that's the thing. The art and animation is awful. It's just really, really bad. In 99. In 99, yeah. I mean, in the in Madhouse 2011 series. It's consistent throughout. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I will say, like, the Madhouse series makes me happy enough to where I don't feel a need to go watch 99. Same. Like, so, even if it's, if it's done better, I'm I, okay. I, I have yeah. seen, I have, I admit, I have seen the comparison between the 99 and the uh, 2011 Uvogan fight. The and an, I think, I'll, I, th I, think I will bad. side with you. Ninety nine definitely has an edge there. Yeah, specifically in the in the moment after the victory, there is this <clears throat> musical piece that plays. It's it's almost tribal and it's very soft and it is very evocative of this tragedy has just occurred. I, and I, they, the there's a moon mm -hmm. and a just blood drips down like a tear and it's one of the most gorgeous scenes in like the entire anime. Mm -hmm. And then in the 2011 version, I'm like, oh, okay, it's it's. I cool. think that it's is one of the biggest problems with the 2011 version. Actually, is its soundtrack. It reuses the same song for like a billion different situations. Like it has its serious song. It has its this is really mystical and powerful song. It has its danger song, and it will just speckle those in. Yeah. So, sometimes that's great. 
Yeah, like, no, sometimes they're, that like they're, you, that's they're what you good. Need. They sound good. Yeah, but once you recognize, it's like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be feeling right now. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. you want to vary it up though. You want to have different. Like, I'm I'm a big fan of light motifs and themes and stuff, and like you know shit, shit that's in mo movie composing, which hard to do in a TV series. Mm -hmm. um, it's very hard to have a consistent composer making new music every episode. Yeah, especially when it's weekly. But having a set piece song just every now and again. Yeah, like just making new ones every now and again would would really help. Um, but I will say. I would argue that um, the the art, the aesthetic of the Madhouse series, the 2011 series, is better for the first arc than the aesthetic of the uh, 90, 99. Yeah, actually, series. To, to be fair, in 99, early on, they, they, everything's a little like dark and serious right away. Well, actually, but that's that's. I, I think I think that's I think that's bad because I think that false sense of security is actually really important. Well. It's it's tough. The uh, the original anime actually puts going through more hell than the uh, manga and the 2011. Okay. Um, so it sounds like it's a, it's a tonal shift, like a, a, distinct tonal yeah. difference, right? Um, and one of the things I also really appreciated was its use of color framing. Like flat out, the art direction for the for 99 is just better than 2011. Now 2011 might have better pacing, and you know might have some better definitely better character design because oh man if you go back and you watch 99 the character design like it's like ooh that barely looks like going in some places that's that's, that's the thing like the uh, 2011 is more consistent yeah. it is apps like madhouse has that style down pat but it's so you don't need to worry about that but like you were saying with that comes the uh well it's consistent throughout so you're never going to get these standout moments yeah uh, and that's that's the frustrating part. It's like if it, it's consistent, consistently above average. Yeah, and that's, I mean, th that's... There, there are parts that stand out, uh, especially in the Chimera Ant arc with some of the fights, especially uh, Netero and Meruem. Yeah, to be fair, yeah. that's the uh, Chimera Ant arc, and 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 there's nothing to compare to, yeah. obviously. But like that is actually where the 2011 anime. Decides, okay, now we're gonna go fucking crazy because I, I think that might be a thing of just they knew some stuff was already adapted yeah, and they so really put the work into stuff that was yeah. never adapted. Yeah, they, they aren't going to try to outdo what was done, maybe out of respect. It, I don't well, really it, know. Maybe it's, it's just the FMA Brotherhood problem. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to of say. Where like, yeah, the like the first everybody's seen this already. Yeah, and it's like, well, mo a lot of people are gonna experience it only the once, so maybe just do a straight adaptation. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but. But I will say Madhouse is better about just adapting it. That's fair. Yeah. But, God, yeah, it, when it comes down to it, I am I actually prefer 99. Not that I dislike 2011. And again, once they got to the Chimera Ant arc, and they did the Greed, I liked the Greed Island arc. I actually hated it before. Then I watched it in the 2011 anime, and I'm like, okay, it's it's all right. It's it's even really good in places. A lot of people lean on the Greed Island arc as their like least favorite arc of the show. I can see why, because it's it, it is a training arc. But I think it introduces so many of the concepts of Nen that are like the most interesting to me. Yeah. The, the the specialized like using two parts of it at the same time. The idea of uh, how exactly are these guys going to unleash their Hatsu? Well, and I, I think it's more of an issue of just every arc, and I'd say like what was adapted into the anime is good. Like so. You just have to pick a weakest link, and it's easy for Greed Island to be the weakest link. Yeah. Because you have the arc that introduced you to the show. You have the tournament arc that's a little more tournament... Mm -hmm. that, the training arc is a little more tournament style, so which, people like that. Which I, which I absolutely love at the very end of that. It's like they get to the top, and it's like, so what it goes on from here? Well, if you win these ten fights, then you get to challenge a floor master. Okay. Then you get your own floor. Okay. And then you, and, and then you can go battle in the Battle Olympia! Is that... Do we just want to go after we win this? Yeah, yeah. I think. Why do you run me? Why'd you come here? <laughs> yeah. So it's it's interesting because the Tournament of Heaven, or the Heaven's, Heaven's Tower, Tower, yeah, Heaven's Tower introduces a lot of concepts and is a lot of room for them to grow, not only in terms of battle, but as characters. Um, I think the reason that people see Greed Island as the weakest link is that it doesn't offer a lot for character growth. Um, yeah. But it does, it just, it's mostly just. It does give us Biscuit, though. Yeah. It, it does it, give it, us it, Biscuit! It, it introduces us to Biscuit, who is uh, one of the better characters, one of the better side characters. Oh my god, okay, so, um, not gonna talk too much about the dub of the sub here. Her dub actress is phenomenal. I have only seen the sub since I got, like, oh. the Verve and all that. Oh man, I. Like I cannot, I cannot tell you how much. Like, just go watch some dub scenes with Biscay. Just a, she's having the time of her life, 
she's so good. I, I also want to touch on we haven't, we haven't touched a lot talk, uh, talked a lot about Alica. And I think that's an char- yeah. important character to discuss. Alika is Alec. Oh my god, Alico and she's Nanika. A, like she's she's a really important character. I I, I love the turnaround with with uh, the, the the elder god that lives inside her. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's just like no, that, that they're nice too. Alika, hey, Aruka and Nanika. So by the way, Aruka, um, that her that name, tough to translate. Nanika means something. something. Yeah. <laughs> And, and and I think they just call like in the sub they just say something. In the something. sub it just says something. And yeah. and and the dub and the dub it's Nanika because mm-hmm. they're like oh okay we're not even gonna try and mm-hmm. touch on that. But I, I love that turn where where you know it got me a bit like where it's like no they they have feelings too and they're and they also see themselves as your little sister so maybe yeah. leave them alone. I couldn't. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, skipping a bit ahead there. The, the, but. the, the translation is weird in the subs there because there's a lot of things where they'll refer to uh, Aluka as uh, Killua's brother. Oh, yeah. I, some characters do, and those are the ones that don't respect Aluka. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so that, it's, it's so, literally so transformative. Yeah. So they're using a just a transformative uh, that thing. Well, well, yeah. well, no, the thing is, so Alika is uh, biologically a boy, but uh, is a bit, it's just little trans girl. Trans girl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah and, a- and like, and Kill is the only one who respects her, her gender, like, like her gender. Like, I, I guess I didn't pick up on that. Yeah. Well, I, I, I didn't realize that, where, that. I didn't realize that that show would have a character. That, I, I, it seems like a, honestly, it seems like a huge apology for the character for the character in the Yuhaku show. show, which, oh, which, oh. funny enough. That character for its time was actually more progressive for its time, but then like I, I mean, guess Yusuke, was, Yusuke was progressive about it. Anyway. Yeah, I'll Yusuke care, was like, I don't, way. I don't care but what I, you got downstairs. I'll beat you up. But I don't know what happened in 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 uh, in his personal life that had him change his mind on on that, uh, on that issue. Probably fucking uh, maybe people just sending letters like that. Or Sailor, like the Magaka of Sailor Moon became his wife. Yeah, and like, but like, he obviously changed his attitude on that, and was like, "I'm just gonna put a trans character in my story, yep. and I'll have characters who disrespect her gender, and Kill will be like, no, she, she's she. That's how she like how she wants to be referred to. That's what I'm gonna call her. Yeah, she's my sister. And, okay. and that's why I love, I love that scene. So yeah, that's why there's the, there's the differentiation. It's like a subtle. Yeah, I, I didn't know if it was more of like a, just a mistranslation. When, when, yeah, when you're watching the subs, it's hard. When I'm watching the subs and I'm thinking like, is that just a mistranslation and they're calling it a brother because they don't want to refer to it as anything? Or are they actually calling it his brother? So, it, interesting. Um, she's a... Uh, oh, she isn't the only character in that family that's biologically a male that uh, that dresses like a woman. But with Kilo's other brother, I, I it's that, hard to that, tell. That, that character se- seems to just refer to themselves as male. Yeah, they so that so they respect that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but all, and also not not a demon monster. Also <laughs> not a demon monster. Um, but yeah, so Alika Alika is fascinating because she's she gets introduced so late into the story. Um, and but and you just sort of accept it though, like even though it's kind of like the secret sibling thing, but it kind of works. Ca- fucking. Togashi was like, wait, I took that thing out of his head. Hmm. I yeah. bet I can get away with something now. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that very well might have been the thing. Because thinking about uh, thinking back on it's like, do you know what situations might have been useful to have a wish? Well, that's the thing. <laughs> uh, it, what's really interesting is I'm pretty sure they, they were like they foreshadowed it. Oh, when? When? Uh, when they showed pictures of, of Kilo's family. Oh, yes, family. yeah, no, no, oh. yeah, you're right. Uh, when they showed pictures of uh, Kilo's family, the Zoldic family, there's always one child who's kind of like in the back, or in their faces blurred out, and it's really weird. I, kn- I know they focus on that photo a bit more uh, in the arc where they introduce Aluka. Yeah, but it's shown earlier, and like, she's there. And, and to be fair, by the time that anime had started, the Aluka arc had yeah. been underway. I'm not sure if in the manga it was there, but in the anime it's definitely there, and they made sure to put her in there. Yeah, um, so kudos in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but Aluka is the scariest thing in that entire series. But it's also series. the most adorable. Yes! Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. The cinnamon roll with the fucking, like, murder, with a with murder, murder swirl. Yeah, well, the murder swirl. All you do is follow simple rules. Like, the rules are actually pretty simple. And, like, as long as you're not a selfish asshole, nobody's dying. Yeah. Well, like, if you're, if, you're not, if you're doing it selfless, selflessly. You, 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 you answer three of their requests, you pat them on the head, you give them a hug, and you toss them in the air, and then you can wish for whatever you want from the dark beast hidden within. Yep, and then the next person dies. Did I tell you that I ever, I played a practical joke on Taka really hard after I watched Hunter Hunter for the first time. Eh? So uh, this is back when we were all carrying around our 3DSs and you all had your Miis. 
I got a hold of his, replaced it, replaced his me with one with just blank eyes and named it something. <laughs> and he just, one day, he just like, he's walking around the con, he goes to check how many me's he passed, like, Oh my god, what happened? What happened? This was like, for like, uh, like three days after I had done it, and I'm just like cracking up. Oh my god. <laughs> Ah, uh, but yeah, I, he thought his, he thought he thought his DS got a virus or got cursed or oh something. God. But yeah, it's, it's really interesting how like the rules with that are just like no, you have to use it selflessly, and you'll get asked a very reasonable final request. Uh, otherwise, mm -hmm. and it's like all right, there you go. Yeah, but if you wish for something selfish, it'll all, be a very all unreasonable sudden, request. All of a sudden, it's going to be bad. And depending on how big the wish is, uh, not only if you're not able to fulfill the request, like I think that some of the examples she gives is, hey, could you give me your liver? Give me your duodenum. Yeah. Give me your spine. But, but give me your brain. And yeah. if you fail to meet the four of those, you die a violent death. The person you love most in the world dies a violent death. And then depending on how big the wish was, a number of people that you spent the most amount of time with are about to die. It is the yeah. most lethal uh, degrees of Kevin Bacon game ever played. Mm -hmm. it, it, and it does put very strict rules on it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And Killowin knows all these rules as you go through it. He knows more rules than anybody else. Yeah, because he's the only one that cares about his sister. And spent time yeah. with her, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the uh, so I'd read all of the Alucard before I'd seen it in the anime. My guys... I know it do, they do it pretty well in the actual, like, fucking show, but the shot of when that fucking butler Gets collapses sh into nothing yeah. is the scariest goddamn moment, because you were like... Like, is it some Junji Ito shit? Yes! Ooh. Oh, yeah, you can tell the direct influence that mm -hmm. Togashi took from Ito for Alaka and Nanika specifically with those fucking... That face. That face. Fucking face. You see little, her face that little prune face? That no, no, I mean Naughty Cuz oh, face. Oh, Naughty face, okay. Yeah, it, it's a little tame. And... I'm, gl I'm glad that translated better to anime than the rest of Junji Ito's work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and that's, that's another example of an arc where uh, Gon's not the main character. He's not even really in it until the very he's, end. He's in a hospital <laughs> because of what he did with He's a damsel Ito. in distress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you, it's hard to imagine a series where, you know, Goku's not in it. Well, I mean, it's example. very easy to imagine that because he's usually not there until the last act. Yeah, this is a bad example. Well, okay. It's, it's hard to imagine like Naruto all of a sudden that while well, they did do it a very little bit once. Pain uh, arc, most yeah, specifically. Yeah, uh, um, with, yeah, with like the arc with like Shikamaru like taking control, mm -hmm. like where Naruto takes a step back. But well, like. What I, all I was saying was Gon comes back at the end of that arc. Yeah. To but, go climb a tree with his papa. And, 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 but, you know, Goku comes in to save the day. Yeah. Or he was already a big part of the arc before he st takes a step aside for another character in yeah. one arc. But I think that's another thing that sets Hunter x Hunter apart, is the fact that every arc, it's not about defeating a big bad. Nope. It's, it's, uh, there's always a twist to it. With Greed Island, it's not about beating Genthru, it's about beating the game and having yeah. fun while beating this oh, game. And finding whatever built. secret his dad put in there. Yeah, with, with uh, Heaven's Tower, it's not necessarily about winning. I mean, sure, Gon wants to fight Hisoka, but it's not about beating Hisoka. It's about punching him once. Look, yeah, and that's that's the the goal there is high but reasonable. Yeah. That's what Togashi likes to do. He likes to give you these high but reasonable goals that you, the characters have to struggle through. Hey, he's teaching you how to plan your actual life. Yeah. Small, reasonable goals. Yeah. <laughs> Hell, the climax of uh, like the, the Gon's in like Gon's victory in the hunter exam is not because he overcame his opponent. It's because he, he refused to lose. Yeah. yeah. It's just like I, I fucking loved that by the way. And this is another thing that this this was my big red flag for Gon moment. It's just that uh the ninja guy who uh like Hanzo, who's just ripping him to pieces absolutely outclasses him in every direction, breaks his arms, literally tortures him for I think they say hours as that fight is going on. And he's just like, look, submit, or I'm going to cut off your legs. And Gon's just like, no! You're okay. not, don't do that! What? It just like changes. I don't want you to, I would rather so you I not. win. I would rather not, so don't do that. He's like, find another way. Yeah, and, and it's, fucking, it's just so great because he's like, like, I respect that you want to win, but please don't do that. Gon even, even counters him with logic. If you do that, I'm gonna bleed out and you lose anyway, ha! 
<laughs> Shit. <laughs> so he's like, so you're going to have to do something to me. So you're going to have to do something or you're going to have to lose. And well, I find that I'll just give up. No, we have to find a way where I can win and feel good about it. <laughs> and so he knocks him out and he's like, I quit. Don't let him take it back. <laughs> uh, and... Man, by the way, did you like that character better in Hunter x Hunter or when he was a Nazi in Yu Yu Hakusho? <laughs> I, I, oh, oh, he, he was oh, much better oh. realized in Hunter x Hunter <laughs> despite not having as much going on. <laughs> But that is the same character, though. Right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's the same. same guy. Kazumaru and Hanzo are absolutely the same trope. Yeah. yeah. By the way, if you, if, for any of you guys who he has might a not, swastika on his well, he has a man, he has a manji. Manji, but it's yeah. Not a, yeah, it's, it's not a swastika, but like because you know Hitler ruined it. He ruins everything. Yeah, yeah. Hitler ruined hot a lot take, of things. Hot take. Uh, the Hitler Nazis ruins things. Yeah, the Nazis ruined shit. The Nazis ruined stuff. So, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, but. Hanzo, man, there are a million, a million characters all throughout Hunter x Hunter that are all interesting, all multifaceted. It, the world in which the characters inhabit is just so chock full of fucking great characters. I just remembered. Huh. What was the thing that you guys were going to come to blows on? Oh. I, th I think it was the 2009 anime. Yeah. Oh, that thing. He and I yeah. debated it in the past. That, that, was a, that was a reasonable discussion, though. That yeah. wasn't coming to blows. That's lame. <laughs> Yeah, no. Uh, hold on, let me try and ratchet it up a little bit. Um, 2011 version's garbage, 99 was better in every regard. Motherfucker! This has been the- no. <laughs> I'm really Came glad that that me. missed me. That was- like, that's how- full, that could've hurt. You are a coward, sir. And a pussy. Also thirsty. Very thirsty pussy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, don't, don't, yeah, don't spit it out. You'll become a wet pussy. Ah, ah. This has been the Talk Cast Pod this Show. This has absolutely been the Talk Cast Pod Show. What do you think of Hunter Hunter? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much once again to our sponsor at Boksu. Boksu! Boksu, where you can get all sorts of delicious Japanese snacksu. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day. Peace out.